intro. Okay. Hi, it's nice to meet you. My name's Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Hello. Nice to you. Saw me this morning in the library. Yes, I did. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you, Amanda. Hi, nice to meet you. Amanda. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Amanda. Okay. I did my project on elementary education. A little bit about me. I've been in the Key Club for the last four years. Uh, the last two years, I've been the secretary. I've been in the student council the past three years and secretary just this last year. And I was invited into the National Honor Society last year, and I've been in it the last two years. My research paper. I did my research paper. I was kind of struggling for a topic, and so he was talking to me about what I wanted to do next year. I knew I wanted to be a teacher, so then I narrowed it down to grades, and I came up with elementary ed. Looking at different topics involved with that, I found I stumbled upon tiered instruction slash differentiated instruction. Tiered instruction is basically, we have them here at the high school and the triangles on the wall, I, like people picked out to me after I picked the topic, and it's basically having the same assignment with different levels of difficulty, different intensity levels. An example of that would be, um, let's say there's a, you all give the class the same worksheet, but then on the bottom it's a critical thinking or a different, harder problem that's for the more advanced learners so they can get a little more out of the lesson. Differentiated instruction is more, you break the class maybe into groups, and then each learning, they're learning the same topic, but they're teaching it a different way. So let's say someone learns by visualizing or auditory learners. They're all getting the same out of the lesson, just different ways. I looked at the special education versus gifted students, which is a big debate in this topic, and how special education gifted student parents sometimes think their kids aren't getting the most when they keep all the kids in the classroom together. They are afraid it's going to hinder the learning of some students. But I focused on how everyone gets the most out of their learning. Everyone's challenged to the right degree. Um, I made two comparative lists on different techniques teachers use in the classrooms to make it the most effective it can be, and a regular classroom versus one with differentiated instruction. Okay, project ideas. I thought maybe I'd plan a lesson, print out papers, come up with my own things. Um, that would be a tiered lesson. I would interview different people on their opinions on tiered instruction and ask around and see who's the best at tiering their lessons and or a teach a lesson, which I ended up deciding on. Um, first of all, I co-taught a lesson with a girl in my class. We both were into the wit. We both love elementary ed. We first, she went to Meadowbrook. She goes to Meadowbrook every week. She invited me to come with her. We met with the teacher. I observed the class for one week, just seeing how she runs her classroom. The next week, we, talk, we talked with her. She described to us what kind of lesson she'd like us to teach, and she decided on money. So we made up our own lesson plan. It's kind of like the ones based here. We have our objective, activator, mini lesson, and then we kind of had our practice and wrap up. So what we did, she basically wanted us to focus on the four coins, uh, the penny, the dime, the nickel, and the quarter. And basically, she didn't want us to go too in-depth, but she wanted them to be able to if they saw a quarter, be able to identify it and the amount. So, what grade was this? Uh, this was first grade, Miss Casey's classroom. Thank you. We had an activator just to warm them up and get them, because it's hard to get kids excited about learning, not to lose their attention. They're a very active class. I remember the first time I came, they were all screaming. They were like, someone spit on someone else's paper. So we wanted to make sure we captivated their attention quickly. She gave us this um, little chant we kind of did at the beginning. We, used, we wanted to use technology with our lesson because as I was touring colleges, I realized more and more technology is brought into the classroom. We used the document projector. We put this under it so it was on the board. All the kids were on the carpet looking at it. We all, they got excited. They were chanting this at the beginning. We then broke them into groups. We put them back into their little desks that are in groups. And we gave them this lesson to start with. Um, Basically on the page it'd say, I see dimes, I see, ooh, I see a different kind of coin, and they would just have to identify on the page like which coin it is. And then bringing my project into it, I decided, we decided to kind of tier the lesson on the bottom for the more advanced lesson learners. They could either identify how many of them are on the page or add up the total that they would all equal. We then kind of brought them all back to the carpet. We, had, we made posters. They were like four facts on each poster showing the coin, the worth, who's on the coin, and different ways to tell the difference between them. To wrap up our lesson, we then brought them all back to the carpet. We brought the different coins 
like just cardboard cutouts. We put them in the middle of the carpet. They circled up, and Isabella, my partner, would call out a coin, and they would go get it. Some of them, as you could see, doing this, they didn't really understand it. They still were kind of struggling with the topic. So what the teacher suggested to us was maybe for a follow-up, we wanted to go back again, what areas we would focus on, like how to get them to focus on certain areas of the coin to help them identify it, help them understand the values more, which ones are like less than others. In conclusion, I thought this was a great experience. I think when I'm going for internships in college, because I'm going to major in elementary ed, it'll, they'll really see I have great experience. I've planned my own lesson before. I've been in the classroom. I plan on going to Worcester State next year, and I'm in the honors program for elementary ed, and I'm very excited about it. And that's it. Any questions? Were you able to put any tiered instruction or differentiated instruction in your lesson? The tiering we did was kind of, once they identified the coins on the page, a lot of them went through that. But then on the bottom of the page, we kind of tiered it, so it was more difficult for if you were more advanced, you could um, like figure out, add them up, and different things like that. But with the differentiated, we found it hard because I didn't want to really mess up like the class dynamic and split them into groups because I didn't know them that well. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really focus on that as much. Okay. Did a lot of uh, students answer the question, the, 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 tier, the additional question? Uh, a lot of them, some of them struggled with what the question was asking because some of them just added up um, how many like quarters they found. But like you could tell the ones more advanced because this one boy was sitting there and he like found the quarter, so he was adding the 25 and the 25. So you could see some of them really grasped it. But I was working with a different girl, and she, um, the teacher later told me she kind of had like a minor learning disability, and she was kind of struggling, kind of rushing through it. She didn't really understand the topic, so she said if we went back, we'd focus more with her. So she had more trouble grasping it. So as you know, the tiered model and the differentiated instruction are specific to the classroom and keeping all the students in the classroom for most of the yeah. time. Do you have an opinion on that versus pull out where we might oh, pull I out special ed or pull out for get to yeah. the counted? In my um, paper I talked about, I kind of like keeping them in the classroom. I think kids like to feel like they belong. I don't think, especially when you're pulling them out because they are a little slower, I think they feel sometimes left out or left behind. So I like keeping them all in the classroom, just maybe separating them into groups and kind of focusing different strategies. How much was the term inclusion used with the teacher that you met with? Yeah, have you heard? Are you familiar with the term inclusion? Yeah. Or, so it's pretty similar to what Mr. Thompson is talking about now, where you have a, a class that really plays to your strengths, where you have students who may have learning exceptionalities, but you also have students who may be uh, extremely bright, well past grade level in a lot of cases. So uh, it's a term that you'll become more familiar with in your studies, but it's, it's very similar to what he's talking about now. What, what do you what what was what did you take as the most positive experience from your teaching in this research project, and then what's one thing that you weren't expecting uh, that you've learned from? Um, positive, I'd say um, I liked planning the lesson because I've never done that before, and I think my f friend who did it with me is in um, the class we do here with the little kids, so she really helped me, and I like to learn the different how to plan a lesson and the, how you have to do the activator and you even have to list the different materials. Surprising I was learned, the craziness kind of took me aback of the classroom. Like, I don't, a lot of the kids, like, it was hard keeping them all in the classroom, because a lot of kids were doing a little he said, she said, blaming. But I was, expe I was happy how well I handled it. The kid, like one kid had an issue, he was like throwing coins or something, the teacher gave him coins. So I think I handled it well. I kind of took him away, and he kind of settled down a little because he had to stay on his chair when we did the like, little carpet time. So that was kind. Of, I was kind of taken aback by like the craziness, but it was good. I it's think amazing, it was manageable. Yeah. It's amazing to think that that teacher does that 180 days. Every I every day. Usually she has. I don't think she was there that time. She has a learning aide who comes in from college. Sure. She kind of mentors her. So she, sometimes she helps her, but she goes. This year it was harder than ever because. A girl in there has like a developmental problem, and there's some learning problems. So she goes, it's harder than it was last year. But she seemed, she handled it so well. Like I couldn't believe it the way she took control of the class, and everyone like responded to her really well. I thought I was impressed. So it made you still want to do that? Yeah, I'm still mm -hmm. excited to do it. I still like first, second grade the best. I think it's a critical period, and I'd be like excited to like try new ways out. 
because when I was younger, I like really struggled in second grade, and I was like almost held back. So I think it was like I know you never know it now. Yeah, back then I did, and so I think it, I'm excited to like help kids who are also struggling, and like bring them up to the level they need to be in. That's great. You have a great um, presence. Oh, you came thank in, you so much. Notes. You have a great voice, great eye contact. Very easy to follow you all the way through. Oh, that's good. Thank you Engaging. so much. And I think it's, it'll be helpful, useful for you that you've identified the need for classroom management so that when you do get out there and have more experience, you're, you're already starting to think about that because it's an important part of being an educator. And also that you find uh, lesson plans are something you're interested in because mm -hmm. you'll find as an educator that it's good to be prepared. And that's, yeah, that's that was like be, the biggest yeah. part. Like, because we had like a copying issue like with there but it all worked out in the end so it is like you really have to plan everything down to the last bit to like make sure they're because if they're like when they're done with the lesson like kids were finishing at different times obviously and they'd like run up to you and they'd be like i'm done what do i do and we'd be like oh just sit down for a second and then they'd all be like running around so it's hard yeah. but you have to like plan every bit well, i would i would also echo what uh, miss donovan said you have so many of the intangibles already you have a extremely strong presence you can tell you love what you do, you, yeah. you love this, uh, and if you love it, the kids will know you love it. Yeah. And that's so important in teaching, is that the, the kids that you work with have to feel like you care. And I felt like, listening to you, yeah. I felt like you really cared. So, you're well on your way, buddy. You did a really, really good job. Thank you I just so hope, much. I really hope you keep the passion for it and keep yeah. working hard, because yeah. we need teachers like you. Our kids need teachers like you. You did a great job. Thank you, you so gave, much. You also gave really good eye contact, which is really important when you're working with small kids. Yeah. Looking right at them and engaging them and, and talking with them like you did with us is, is very important. And great, you smile. It's yes. also important when you work with kids that you're, you have like a happy... Yeah, I know it's hard to stay like, positive all yeah. the time when they're like all <laughs> around. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right, so thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Good luck. Thank you. You did great.